we are now finally filming Savannah, which is a house on Windermere Island, neighbouring house to where I live. But Windermere is a very remote island, not at all like Harbour Island. Um, very few houses here, no infrastructure whatsoever, which means the internet does not stream as it could do. But this house is pretty extraordinary, so I wanted you to be able to see it, and I wanted to be able to share it. Um, my father built it in 1967, which is the year that I was born. Um, he had been to Egypt on his honeymoon. He was very, very influenced by all things Egyptian. And so he came back, and when the chance came for him and my mother to build something here in the Bahamas, he wanted it to feel like an Egyptian mausoleum. My aunt and uncle, incidentally, built a house across the road. They had the same architect, but none of the same ideas at all. They built a home that was a very regular Caribbean home with a view of the ocean and the breezes coming through in a nice pitched roof. This house, Savannah, flat roof, very Egyptian, not so good in hurricane season. It's never going to blow away because it's made of concrete, but my God, the roof's been a nightmare. But the house is incredible to look at. Uh, it's made from the honey-coloured sand from the beach, mixed with limestone cement. And you can see on the walls that they rendered the walls with nails on a board and shells to make it have that effect. There we have the lagoon on that side, and on the other side we have the ocean. But the house is very much anchored by these two large, what's known as pylons, outside. Uh, when my father first had the house built, there was water in the fountains there. But of course, anybody who has lived in the Caribbean knows full well that salt and sand and wind and the rather corrosive atmosphere of the Caribbean does not help fountains. So now we've just planted over that. Originally, this was the dining room, and my father had it open to the sky. A very romantic idea, but absolute nightmare in tropical heat because the room got so incredibly hot. And we painted the, the ceiling white recently because it had been black. Uh, to begin with, and we felt that actually it lifted it up. I'm always very nervous when I start messing with my father's idea, because he was a bloody genius, certainly. Let's go into the big main room over here. Inside the room, again, lots of light, views down over to the ocean there. Um, of course, when we first built the house, it was not grown up like this, so you could see the ocean very clearly. But my father wasn't interested in the ocean. He was interested in the architecture and the piece of land and the hill that the house was built on. Um, the, 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 the walls are unbelievably thick, so we're incredibly safe during a hurricane. Soundproof from irritating children. I grew up in this house. Uh, my children have also grown up in this house. Uh, holidays and parts of the summer. My grandfather, who was the Alma Battle of Burma, would come here on holiday with us. And I remember him sleeping in the room over there. And he would come out after lunchtime. And he would make my sister and I push his huge shoulders back against the walls like that. And we would stretch up on chairs and push his shoulders back. Um, but across the road, where my aunt and uncle live, uh, we had all my cousins were there, and we really spent amazing holidays. In fact, the Prince of Wales would spend time down there, and my grandfather would spend time up here. The Prince of Wales would sleep in the tiniest room down there. Uh, my grandfather's room was no bigger up here either. It's a very understated, uh, low-key life, which is what my mother and my aunt loved about it, as you can see. We don't often wear very much in this house, or indeed that house across the road. I think what's brilliant about this room is that it has these two extraordinary paintings by Bruce Tippett. Uh, and I'm not sure if you can see to the top there, but they are scroll top paintings, which are quite fun, in very Caribbean colours. Again, there have had to be some updates in the house just over the years. Uh, the Chinese Chippendale chairs, the original ones, finally met their end, and we replaced them with these, which are actually Jonathan Adler, uh, and they've done pretty well for us. I love the um, Perspex cube tables. Very cool then, very cool now. I did ask on my Instagram uh, if anybody could guess which of the extraordinary collection of uh, Perspex box and sculptures um, from my father's book we still had in this house. Here it is. 
This is the remaining, uh, the remaining one from David Hicks. What we love about it is the Perspex cover, and look, look, isn't that fun? All they are are everyday mops, which we sometimes adjust their hair so that they look like palm trees, but those are just literally everyday mops. He used salad servers, he used bristle brush brushes, um, he would take anything that felt normal and make it into something quite interesting. So this is the excitement of this room. I'm going to show you very quickly a peek in the kitchen because I'm sure you want to know what the kitchen looked like. My father had no interest whatsoever in kitchens, in cooking, and only a little bit of interest in food. So this is not at all the kitchen that the house was designed with, but we've redone that ourselves. Again, my father would probably be turning his grave to look at that. One fun story, um, we had a wonderful, wonderful Bahamian housekeeper who we loved and adored, and every year she got excited when my mother would come and she would say, teach me more, teach me more, give me English recipes, she was very ambitious. And my mother brought out with her one year a recipe for a chocolate souffle. And the housekeeper said, absolutely, I'm going to attempt this. And we sat down to dinner, all excited about the idea of this. Um, and we were waiting for the first course to come out. And the door opened, and the housekeeper slash cook came through very excitedly with the hot chocolate souffle, done to perfection, but served before the starter before the main course. Nobody had explained to her that the hot chocolate souffle came after the meal, right at the end. We ate it, it was delicious. Um, David Hicks tablecloth here, uh, one of the original pieces of fabric from him. Uh, again, I love the very much the geometric, the sand color, the honey color, matching the atmosphere of the room. Uh, we can have a quick sneak peek in one of the bedrooms so you can see how simple they were. Again, we have changed them somewhat since David Hicks did them in the first place. The plan of the house is very straightforward. Four block rooms leading off the dining room there. Uh, and this is one of the main bedrooms. Um, again, John Robshaw fabric. Uh, I think my father would appreciate that because it's Indian print. He'll like that a lot. We've got original David Hicks cushions here. Uh, very generously given to me by another decorator, Tom Shearer. My God, we've got John and Adler, we've got John Robshaw, we've got Tom Shearer, we've got so many other influences in this room. Um, but clearly the main point is David Hicks. And here on the walls are some of my father's very early work just after he came out of art school. Um, and I love the fact that he's been doing it with this white outline on everything. Um, they're very, very interesting, those there. So I love the fact that they're in the house that he built. I think it's interesting to know that all of the roofs, the ceilings, were done to look like they were floating. So if you can see at all up there, they are recessed and painted black so that there is this feeling of everything with great height. Um, and all the bedrooms, all the bathrooms also have this recessed ceiling so that it feels like it's floating, which is very cool. And finally, a little bit of India Hicks in the house of my father. Uh, my, my treasure box, uh, which we've done in the turquoise color to absolutely match back to the Bruce Tippett painting. Uh, you can see how influenced I am. Uh, love the fact that this box looks good here. Looks good most places. And inside, uh, we've got the heritage lined fabric, which I designed, again, very inspired by my father and his geometrics. And on the front, We've got our token, live an extraordinary life. So that really is the tour of Savannah. It's very simple, it's very understated. It was a house that was made for the sun and for the sand and for holidays. And it is so wonderful that not only was I able to grow up here, but that also my children are able to come here and grow up and enjoy everything that I did too.